to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 306. George Lindsay interview. Uh, George Lindsay full interview. <laughs> That'll do. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store.com. Drop by over at Weaver's and check out some of the great Mayberry items they've got there. There's all kinds of things for a Mayberry fan that you know that you could get from Weaver's and give to them. I know they'd love them. So head over to Weaver'sDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of Two Chairs No Waiting, number 306, is Jan Newsom, my wife. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. It's always great to spend a little bit of time in Mayberry with you each week. So I really do appreciate you dropping by. This week, as I'm recording this, is the week of Thanksgiving 2014. Wow, 2014. And I've been doing these podcasts since uh, October of 2008. This is uh 306th episode, and I've had some requests over that time to uh, review some of the uh, episodes we did way back at the beginning. Now, you can still go and listen to all those online. Uh, but one in particular that I've wanted to do again, and uh, I was thinking about him a lot uh, lately, uh, from George Lindsay, and this is going to be called George Lindsay Full Interview, because uh, back in night, well, in 2008, I started this podcast by doing uh, or playing the interview I'd done in 1998 with George Lindsay. Uh, and I broke that up into four parts, and I've always wanted to uh, put them all together so you could hear the whole interview in one sitting. Uh, because back when we first started doing the podcast, you know, folks didn't have higher speed internet and things were a little bit harder. Now, six years later, it's a little easier for you to get these longer episodes. So the episode lengths have gone from about 10 to 12 minutes long up to being 20 to 25 minutes long. So at the time, I had to break it all up into short segments. Plus, it helped me come up with the material for the show because <laughs> I could do one, you know, four in, four shows out of one one segment here. But I've always wanted to put these back together uh, because it was really, I just really thought uh, folks would enjoy hearing this from George all at one time. Now, so uh, I'm going to tell you some stuff about it. I do want you to think about going back and listening to those four original episodes because in each episode, I talked about some of the stuff that George is going to talk about in, in, that you're about to hear. And I probably made commentary and stuff on it and that I'm not going to remember this time because uh, I didn't go back and listen to those episodes. So you might want to go back and listen to just the parts with me telling stories because I know I told some stories during it. But uh, here's what happened. This was in 1998. Uh, we were sitting around at Jim Clark, the presiding goober of the Andy Griffith Show Rio and Watchers Club. We were sitting around at his house. It was my, it was me, uh, my wife Jan, and of course Jim Clark and Kenneth Junkin sitting around with uh, George Lindsay, and we we were just sitting around talking. And I asked him, at the, you know, is there any chance that you would be willing to do an interview? You know, I've never done an interview. This was 10 years before I even started doing the podcast. And I'd never done an interview before. I never interviewed anybody. So George said, sure, I'll do it. So I had a cassette recorder, an old cassette recorder. So you'll be able to tell the audio quality of this recording of George's interview is not as good as the quality we have now. But I think you're going to enjoy it just the same. Uh, but it was recorded on a cassette tape recorder. So there's a lot of hiss and stuff. And what what actually happened in the uh, course of the interview was basically George ended up asking himself questions for the most part. He would say, well, what's my favorite episode? Well, my favorite episode is. <laughs> so uh, at one point, I think I had gone in and uh, replaced him asking questions with me asking questions. I don't think you'll hear that on this. I believe this is from the raw uh, audio of that night or that afternoon. And I just got to tell you, George Lindsay was such a wonderful guy. He was so nice to me. Uh, he he just he did this for us. He did it for you as a fan of the Andy Griffith Show because I told him I'd like to do this interview and put it on the internet, and I did. I put it on uh, the iMayberry.com website back then, 
in real audio format. If you any of you are old enough to remember what that is or might know what it is. Uh, but uh, this this interview is the thing that got me into actually doing this podcast because I wanted to take that from real audio format and put it in MP3 format where more people could hear it. And so I guess, again, I'm thankful, since it's Thanksgiving week for me, uh, for George Lindsay and all he did to help get uh, the fans just to give us a little bit more of the Mayberry feeling that he had. So, folks, I'm not going to talk anymore. Let's head this over to George. Now, again, this is sitting in Jim Clark's living room. And we're just sitting in there and visiting with George. And he's giving us uh, some Mayberry gold that you're not probably going to hear anywhere else. So let's head over and hear what George has to say. Uh, and I know that you're going to enjoy it. So here we go. My name is George Lindsay. I played Goober on the Andy Griffith Show for and maybe RFD, and uh, it seems to be uh, everybody wants to know various things about the Andy Griffith Show, and since I was there for most of it, uh, maybe I can answer some questions that, uh, that some of you have. Uh, 82 episodes of the Andy Griffith Show, so that's, uh, uh, I was around for a while. And um, so we, we'll just get started about uh, uh, some questions. How did I get on the show? Uh, I auditioned. Originally, I was supposed to be Gomer, and uh, they had taken a hold on me. I'd gone over and, and read for the part and got it, and then Andy Griffith saw Jim Neighbors performing at a nightclub called The Horn out in Santa Monica, and he hired Jim. And I didn't speak to Neighbors for quite a number of years after that, because I thought that was my part. But it worked out pretty good for both of us. I worked with some of the best people, best actors in the world on that show. Of course, Andy certainly was the guiding light behind all of it. He was what made it click and why it was as good as it was and why it has lasted all these many years. What's your favorite show? My favorite show is probably uh, called Man's Best Friend. It's uh, about me having a talking dog. And I like that uh, sh show because it let Goober be really more uh, less um, of a, of a kind of a dope. Uh, it, it shows some qualities that Goober had, of uh, really some feelings and stuff that he had. Uh, and I really like that show. But you have to always remember that uh, we were doing somebody else's words. Uh, they, they weren't ours. And all we did was memorize them and say them. Uh, that was my favorite show. And of course, the classic uh, Goober Takes a Car Apart. That was a funny show. And I think uh, Andy Eats Three Spaghetti Dinners. I forget the name of that. Uh, Dinner at Eight. Dinner at Eight, yeah. That uh, was a, a good show. I pretty much liked all of them. I, uh, the first year, I didn't much like a lot of my work because uh, I hadn't gotten a real insight on the Goober character and persona of what he was all about. And what he was all about was he was a very kind, caring, uh, overachiever. And, and um, if you'll notice the scripts, in a lot of the scripts, he solved their problems in his own peculiar way. Oh, I like uh, the one Gruber grows a beard, too. And that was a tough show to do because uh, they had to put that beard on me every day. And then I had to wa I wash it off uh, every day. I had to uh, take and get all that hair off of me and then uh, go home and take a shower. And I filled up my sinks with, uh, <laughs> with hair. But uh, that was a, uh, I like that show. It's hard for me to remember 81 shows. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or 82, as the case might be. Uh, people want to know about my background. Um, uh, I'm a, I have a BS degree in bioscience. I have an honorary doctorate from the University of North Alabama. I played football. I was the starting quarterback there for uh, two years. Uh, I didn't take any kind of drama classes or, or any kind of acting. Uh, I wasn't in any theater or anything. I was in phys ed and bioscience. And, uh, but I did win every talent show they had at the college. And by the way, this is all in my book. Goober in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> it's Avon Publishing, 9.99, still in print. Yeah. Uh, available through the Bullet. You uh, certainly can order through that, and which I read the Bullet every word of it to see who got more ink than I did. Uh, <laughs> the book is good. Uh, anyway, uh, 
before I give away all my secrets, uh, <laughs> I'd rather you get the book. <laughs> I, I, I suppose we'll have another, uh, let's see, what is this, the 38th year? And uh, I suppose whoever's around, and, and when we, we get to number 40, there's going to be some kind of big something going on. Maybe, uh, maybe Turner Broadcasting will do something. I don't know, but it seems like it would be appropriate to do something in, uh, at the 40th year. I don't know very many other shows that have been on that long. I had a great time on the show. Uh, uh, I, we, we were so, not in awe, but in, um, uh, we respected each other's work so much because everybody was so good. Everybody had their own particular thing they did, like Howard Morris and, and like uh, Denver Pyle and, and of course there's Howard McNear and, and Don and, and without saying Andy and Francis and uh, Anita and uh, the boy, you know, the one, the red-headed boy. <laughs> and uh, Betty Lynn and uh, uh, all those people. Uh, a lot of people don't remember um, Paul Hartman, who played Emmy. I don't know how many years he did the show, but he was, he was very, uh, very important to the show. It seemed like when, when one would leave, uh, somebody else would, they filled the void pretty good. I don't know of any other show that'll ever be on that long. Something I'd like to know about myself is like uh, Howard McNear. I know a lot of. But well, he was just like that. Yeah. You like to know that because you do him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but he uh, uh, he was like that. I loved working with him. We we would come to the studio to watch him work when we weren't working, and that's rare in, in my business. He he was wonderful. He was a good friend too. I I liked him. We we his wife loaned my wife her, her mink coat one time to go to a party. He was just that way. <laughs> if you remember some of the old Elvis Presley movies he's in where he plays the travel agent. And then I saw him in a, 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 a Cinemascope Technicolor cowboy movie not long ago. And you couldn't believe he was playing a bad guy. You just fell down laughing. Every time he'd say a straight line, you'd laugh. But he had a long career. I think he came out of the, uh, well, I'm not telling him anymore. You can read that in the book. <laughs> uh, where did you come up with uh, as Goober doing that? Yeah. From Alabama, from Jasper, Alabama. Uh, it's it's an affirmation uh, that people do. Uh, hey, uh, did you have a date last night? Yep. You know, they, they don't say yep. You and uh, uh, how'd it go yesterday? You know, it's it's just a a, a sound and a and a thing with your hand that's an uh, affirmation of everything went great without having to explain it. Was that's it, the best I've ever done that. That was good. Was it your idea about the, the hat or was that something? I don't know. I don't know about that. Uh, that's been uh, dropped through the cracks. Uh, I, I can't remember. I do know that it was my idea to put the holes in the top of it, but I don't remember. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I know when I was growing up as a boy, uh, no, when I was growing up as a boy, they wore Civil War hats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up as a boy, the, the guy that worked at the fitness station wore those kind of caps. And then you later saw it on Jughead, uh, but I know I, maybe I was before Jughead. I don't, I don't really know how that came about. It was my idea for have the rag out of the pocket. It was my idea to have all the pens and, and uh, pencils and tire gauge in the pocket. I was doing anything I could to uh, to be different from the Gomer character. And then it got to the point where I got paranoid about the pens and pencils. They had to be in a certain way or I wouldn't work. And they would come in in the mornings and take them out and change them. And, and I'd get all upset about it. Did, was there a lot of that kind of thing went on on the set? Uh, well, it was with me show? because uh, I didn't have any sense of humor. I was always serious and they knew that it would get to me. So they did that to me all the time. You might want to mention, uh, you know, you were on several other shows before, mm -hmm. Andy Griffith Show and then following, you know, Twilight well, Zone. Oh, no, MASH, Twilight Zone, Hitchcock, Gunsmoke, Voice to the Bottom of the Sea, Rifleman, Profiles in Courage, uh, the Loretta Young Show. Uh, some of those are multiple five Hitchcocks and five gun smokes. Uh, a lot of talk shows. I did all the all the talk shows. Uh, 
Jack Parr, Johnny Carson, Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, and and I did a lot of that stuff, and I did uh, a lot of game shows, and, and of course I did two Broadway musicals. I was fortunate; I never had to play a small part. I always had major parts and stuff. And for my first show on Broadway, I was the comedy lead. So. And I, I worked as an extra in New York though, for, for a long time on television. I was on the, as an extra on the Sid Caesar show at Playhouse 90, and, uh, some other shows, just to, to, to make a buck or two. The interesting thing about the Griffith show is that uh, everybody on that show, and we all know what Ron Howard has done, but uh, everybody had a, uh, I think everybody was uh, Ronnie Howard and Howard McNear, they all had a college degree. Everybody had finished college. A couple of us had taught school, Andy and myself. It was uh, just a uh, platinum cast. It was, uh, and, and the scripts were written where they were easy to learn. And when I started, we did 39 shows a year, uh, and we'd start in the summer, and you'd have to do, we'd get about three months ahead because it took six months to cut uh, and edit and get a show ready to put on the air. So we only saw them when, when the public saw them. Then it dis decreased till it got down to about, to tw I think when we were doing Mayberry, it was 26 shows. But we worked every weekend. You stayed home and learned your words. Uh, two things, Andy. Really, you must know your words and you must be on time. There's no such thing as not being on time in television. And I like episodic television back there in one camera a lot better than I do uh, uh, three or four camera shows now on tape. I saw one the other day where he uh, picked me up and threw me in the lake. Uh, I don't know the name of it. <coughs> oh, it was just something about a... Uh, now, Warren was predicting the future for him. Oh, Warren. that's Warren. right. Warren. Okay, that's what it was. Warren. Yeah, warning from Warren. And uh, that little lake was, uh, was uh, out in uh, Beverly Hills, and that was uh, a built little lake. They built that on the, on the, on outside when we went to shoot outside because uh, you couldn't throw anything or put anything into uh, the, uh, the reservoir that we used as Myers Lake. But now you got to think, when you do that kind of thing, when he threw me in there, if they don't get it, you can't do it over because you, you got to have a new, new wardrobe, you got to have everything, and that's a one-time thing. And I think there's another one I did where he was going to, we did something to Andy, and, and he looked at me, and I went ahead and jumped in. I think it's when the girls... Helen and Thelma Lou. Or was something about the big fish, wasn't it? About old Sam? Oh, yeah, he just looked at me and I just jumped in. Yeah, that was the big Sam, wasn't it? Was it? Well, I know I jumped in the water twice. See, he threw me in that one. And the other one, I just went ahead and he looked at me and I jumped in. So I don't remember what the show it was. And you're the... The, uh, you're the authority on this. I know that we had a silver carp, and we had a 500-gallon truck, a 500-gallon truck there to hold this fish in. That's all that. Another thing you want to uh, ask you about is your film festival. That's yes, out. the George Lindsay Film Festival. It's called the George Lindsay Television and Film Festival. It's in. Uh, in Florence, Alabama, at the University of North Alabama on April 10th and the morning of April 11th. And we're uh, trying to uh, have a, uh, serve up a venue for independent filmmakers of television, videos, under two hours, uh, feature films, uh, a place that people can see their work and they don't have to go to Hollywood or New York or maybe to Sundance or that kind of thing. And I'm bringing in people who, uh, uh, who can uh, bring some information to these people who make films, uh, probably information that they can't get elsewhere. And uh, one of the, the main speakers coming in this year is Tom Sharonis, and he is the last two years the director of news radio, and he's won a Peabody, an Emmy, and a Golden Globe for his directing and producing. And uh, he's directed Seinfeld and uh, Carolina in the City and Ellen and. Uh, Oh, and he is a graduate of the University of Alabama. He has a master's degree from there, so uh, we're really excited. He's going to be the keynote speaker this year. And uh, he had been in educational television for 17 years before, uh, I guess, getting into commercial television. So 
He's a really nice guy. I met him, uh, I, I did a, uh, a news radio. I guess started on news radio last year, and that's how I met him. And we just hope that uh, we might can run across us another Billy Bob Thornton out there, and, uh, uh, or somebody that can, uh, you know, uh, all these people networking and workshopping and getting together uh, would, uh, seems like to me, would help a lot where you're, well, if you're with a bunch of people that are doing the same thing you're doing, there's bound to be some information that can be around. And so the different people, uh, heads of the departments are going to have, we're going to have a different kind of still film classes and how to do this classes and how to do that classes. And it's going to be a whole day of, of knowledge about independent filmmaking. Are you going to plan to do it every year? Is it yes, sir. Year? This, this is not a one-year thing. We're already working on uh, next year. That's great. And so if anybody's listening to this, uh, I know there is. Uh, if you've got a film, the, the deadline was February the 25th, but uh, we could extend that a little bit if you had a film you'd like to send to us. And I need to give you the number. It's I've on got that. all that stuff. Oh, you yeah, got, I got it? it all. Yeah, I put it on here. Yeah. And, uh, send us a film. And uh, it's open to the public, too, to uh, come to the luncheon and hear Tom speak and uh, uh, listen to Tom and uh, Tom Sharonis, and also uh, to come to the gala that night. And, where it's going to be like the Academy Awards, and I'll be the Billy Crystal of it, and uh, we're going to show a little bit of each film that's in the finals, and we've got some great judges, and uh, I don't have anything to do with that part of it. And uh, then we'll announce the winner, and then we're going to show the winning film. Uh, you went down to the Alabama State House. I, don't know if you did. I did go to the legislature, and I spoke at the legislature, and I told them uh, they were, gave me an award, and also they uh, uh, announced the film festival. And uh, I told them the reason that, that I did as well as I did in Hollywood is I had kind of a, a I did I had been able to do things that other actors hadn't been able to do because I was raised in Alabama, and that was uh, uh, you know go barefoot in the summer and uh, put. RC, I um, put the peanuts in my RC cola and make it last all day and sit on the back porch and watch nothing for two or three hours and uh, hitchhike from Op to Gordo. And they thought that was, they, they'd all done that. Mm -hmm. But it, it was special uh, and I had a really good time. Yeah. If there's anything else you'd like to say to everybody, uh, Oh yeah, I get me a sling blade. Yeah, yeah. He come to the film festival. He might meet somebody down there you'd know saying, Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, George. I really appreciate it. So there you go. That was uh, the very first <laughs> interview I ever did. And as you heard at the beginning of it, George was uh, asking questions of himself. And, uh, you know, I just, I really do appreciate him. He, uh, he was always so nice to me. And I guess I was really thinking about him because his uh, birthday Celebration is always in early December. Uh, the we would all get all get together and go up and uh, see George for his birthday, and uh, you know, we're, he's not he's not there anymore, and so I really miss him. And I guess I was just really thinking about him, and that's what got me thinking about these uh, this interview. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you had heard it before, I hope you enjoyed hearing it again in its entirety altogether, and. Uh, you know, it's just always fun to visit with our friends from Mayberry. And George Lindsay was such a friend to so many. Uh, you know, he uh, he talked about his film festival. It's still going. It's still going strong. He's had guests like Billy Bob Thornton, Lucas Black, Stephen Root. Uh, you know, he was in uh, news radio. I don't know if you remember him. And he was on Old Brother Where Art Thou and some things like that. Ray Stevens has been there. Mike Kerb. Uh, from the recording industry, he's been there. So many people have been uh, over the years uh, to be a part of the George Lindsay UNA Film Festival, and it's a great legacy he's left for uh, young filmmakers uh, with so many other things he's done as well. He raised over uh, $1.7 million for the Alabama Special Olympics. Uh, there were just so many, so many things that George did that people probably didn't even know about it. But uh, he, was a, he was a great guy and a great ambassador for Mayberry. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. And I uh, hope I'd hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. You can call me at 888-684-8415. Or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. Or just drop by over at Two Chairs No Waiting and leave a comment right there on the website. 
I'd love to hear from you. It's always great to just share a little bit of the Mayberry feeling with you and hear back from you as well. So, folks, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving if you're hearing this during that time. And if it's not Thanksgiving week, I hope you have a great week just the same. We'll see you guys next time on Two Chairs No Waiting. Good night, everybody.